Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be doing all of the exam questions that have been asked about equations of circles and tangents. And like I always say in these videos, if you do want to use this uh, document that I've got here, it is linked in the description because it's all fully hyperlinked. Now, I will admit I've actually answered the first one already because I found drawing these circles pretty difficult. So I wanted to have this one already prepared so I can at least talk to you about how I did it. So for the first one, it says on the grid, draw the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 12.22, sorry, 12.25. Now, the standard equation is that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So to find the radius, all I was going to do is the square root of 12.25, which I will just do on my calculator right now. Let's just clear this. So we get the square root of 12.25, which is 3.5. So that's why on the diagram that I've got here, I have drawn a circle that is 3.5 as the radius in all of these different directions. And that should get me those two marks that I've got here. It then says for three more marks, find estimates for the solutions of the simultaneous equations x squared plus y squared equals 12.25, which is already drawn, and 2x plus y equals 1. So I think I need to draw 2x plus y equals, two, equals 1 on the graph. I'll make y the subject. So y is minus 2x plus 1. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this in a different colour. So let's put this in like the red colour that I've got here, and then we'll answer this in red. So this means it's going to be having a y-intercept of 1 and a gradient of minus 2. So here is the 1. Now minus 2 means that every time you move across one space, you're going to go down 2. So that means it's going to be here, moving across 1 and down 2, across 1 and down 2, across 1 and down 2. And you can just very quickly see what this is going to look like. Now I'm going to try and draw this line and hopefully use the good notes feature where it pops it and becomes a line like that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that's drawn. Now all we need to do is just find out where they cross over. And this is where they will allow you to have like a range of different marks for this one. So I'm going to write my answers onto here. I would say the x coordinate of this one looks like that's about minus 1.1. So I'm going to say that x is minus 1.1. And the y coordinate of this this is 3, so I'd say it's about 3.3. .3. And then for this one that we've got here, let's see what the x-coordinate is. I'd say the x-coordinate looks about 2. And the y-coordinate looks like minus 2.8. So they're going to allow you to write them on the diagram like this. Normally, there'd be a little box for putting them in. So I'm going to just say my answers for this question that the solutions of this is this one and this one that we've got here. Now they don't write the range in the mark scheme for this, but it does say to use the judgment as the examiner. So we've got minus 1.1 and 3, 3.3. Yep, that's pretty much what we had, maybe slightly different because of the way I've drawn it. And then two and minus 2.9. So I think even though my answers are slightly different, they would be given just because of the way that it's been drawn. And it does say here, um, use professional judgment for this, okay? Now, this one is a particularly nasty question because of the fact it's just got like horrible coordinates. But the, the way this works is kind of pretty straightforward. So it says L is the circle with equation x squared plus y squared equals 4. So we've got some kind of circle like this. And it says P is a point on L. I know that it's over in the first quadrant because of the fact that these are both positive. So it's somewhere over here. And it wants us to find an equation to this tangent at that point P. Now, the thing that we need to know for this is that the radius and the tangent, they meet each other at right angles like this. So this is the point P that we've got over here. We're going to start off with by finding the gradient of P from the origin. In fact, I'm not going to call it the gradient of P. I'll call it the gradient of OP. In other words, what is the gradient of this red line that we've got here? Well, the origin is 0, 0. So when I do the change in Y over the change in X, I'm going to have root 7 over 2 minus 0 over 3 over 2 minus 0. So in other words, it's just root 7 over 2 over 3 over 2. And I'm going to write that in on the calculator. So it is going to be a root 7 over 2 all over 3 over 2. So it's a fraction within a fraction. Now, because you've got a calculator, I just want to take advantage of this. So that is root 7 over 3. So the gradient is root 7 over 3. Now we're going to say that the gradient of the tangent, so if we're talking about the tangent to the circle, it is perpendicular to this. So the tangent gradient is going to be the negative reciprocal of this one, which is going to be minus 3 over root 7. 
Now, I could rationalize this, or I could leave it like this. It doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, I, probably, I probably won't. I'm probably just going to leave it like this. Now, I need to just find the equation of the line, which has this gradient, and it passes through this point. So if I come up here, we know that the gradient of the line is minus 3 over root 7. We know the x coordinate is 3 over 2, and the y coordinate is root 7 over 2. So if I do my y equals mx plus c and find out what c is, y is root 7 over 2, m is minus 3 over root 7, and x is 3 over 2, and I'm going to find out what c is. So it's root 7 over 2 plus these two things, which is 3 times 3 over root 7 and over 2. So I'm literally just adding that whole thing to the other side. And that is what c is going to be equal to. So let's type that all in on the calculator. We are going to have, for the first part, root 7 over 2. Don't seem to be able to type this in right. Plus 3 over root 7 multiplied by 3 over 2. And it gives us that c is 8 over root 7. So c is equal to 8 over root 7. Now, your calculators probably would have rationalized that for you, and it would have come out as 8 root 7 over 7. My calculator, for some reason, doesn't do that, which means that the equation of the line is y equals mx plus c. Now, the m was minus 3 over root 7. You could rationalize it if you wanted to. If you rationalized it, your calculator probably would have had it come up as this, which would be minus 3 root 7 over 7. So y is going to be minus 3 root 7 over 7, x plus 8 root 7 over 7. So we've got this here. Do you notice how they actually left it in the um, irrational denominator, which is perfectly fine. You could have it rationalized like this one that we've got here. You could even give it in decimal form. And if you wanted to, this formula here is from A-level. So if your teachers have shown you the A-level formula for this, then you could also use that. But it's not a particularly nice question. Okay, this one isn't actually a circles one, but it kind of fits in with the whole question, this circle bit down here. So I thought this one kind of has to, has to fit in somewhere. The equation of the curve is y equals a to the power of x. a is the point where the curve intersects the y-axis. State the coordinates of a. So something intersects the y-axis when x is equal to 0. So y is equal to a to the power of 0. And we know that a to the power of 0 is 1, which means the coordinates of a are 0, 1, because the x-coordinate is 0 and the y-coordinate is 1. Now here's the circles question. It says the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals 16. Now, we know something about this circle. This has a standard formula of x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r squared is 16, which means the radius is 4. Let's read the rest of the question. The circle C is translated by the vector 3, 0 to give circle B. Draw a sketch of circle B, label with coordinates the centre of circle B, and any points of intersection with the x-axis. So beforehand, this is what circle C would look like. Circle C is just going to be a regular kind of circle like this, and it has a radius of 4, which means it crosses at 4, 4, minus 4, and minus 4, and the centre is at the origin. Now, when we do a sketch of circle B, it is going to move this vector here. It means three spaces to the right. So when I draw this circle, it's going to move three spaces to the right. Well, the minus 4 is going to become a minus 1. So if I actually draw the circle like this for a second, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to move it three spaces to the right like this. So that's going to become a minus 1. The 4 that's over here is going to get 3 bigger and become a 7. And we don't have to say anything about the y-axis because that's a lot harder to find these. It only wants the points of intersection with the x-axis. The last thing we want to find is the centre of the circle. Well, the centre of the circle previously was the origin, so the centre of this part is going to be 3. Now, if you wanted to write these coordinates in the other form, you could write them as minus 1, 0, and then you could write it as 3, 0, and 7, 0. But actually, just the, one, the minus 1, the 3, and the 7 is perfectly fine as well. So we've got this part 0, 1, which we did for the correct bit, and we've got these bits being labelled as well, OK? So it doesn't have to be drawn. Um, it could be just implied by drawn, but it could just be that 3 as well. This one's super easy because x squared plus y squared equals r squared. 
So we know that r squared is 42.25. So I'm just going to square root that to find out what the radius of this circle is. So let's do the square root of 42.25. And it is 13 over 2. Or you could say that r is equal to 6.5, which that is equivalent to. So either of those answers would be accepted for that quick one marker there, 6.5. And this one is a pretty weird question. It's, it's sort of got some stuff to do with the equation of a circle. So let's read through what it says. It says the diagram shows the circle center O. AB is the tangent to the circle at the point A. Angle OBA is 30. And point B has coordinates 16, 0. So that means this length here is 16. Point P has coordinates 3, P, P. Find the value of P. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. You must show all your working. So first of all, we know that the circle has the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And it seems like this is the bit I've got most information about. I don't really know anything about p, so I'm going to think about this. Now something we should know is that the tangent that we have here is perpendicular to the radius of the circle. And as soon as I draw that on, I hope that this angle of 30 degrees is going to become more useful as well as this coordinate because what I've got here that I'm going to highlight in green is I have a right angled triangle. Now I'm going to draw that right angled triangle out over here. And what we can see is that this part is the radius and this length from here to here is 16. So I can say that that is 16 and that is 30 degrees. Now I'm going to do a bit of Sokotoa. I'm going to use that because I can find out what the radius is equal to and that will come up with the equation which will allow me to do something with this. So using Sokotoa here, I know that the sine of 30 is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So that means that r is equal to 16 sine 30. Now sine 30 is one that you should know off by heart. Sine 30 is a half. So the answer is going to be 16 times a half, which is 8. But I'll show you it on the calculator because this is a calculator paper. And we get that the radius of the circle is 8. So using this information that we've got at the top here, because x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 8 squared. In other words, x squared plus y squared is equal to 64. And we know that the point P, which is 3PP, P, lies on that circle. So the x coordinate is 3P and the y coordinate is P. So I will take these and substitute them into that equation. So I'm going to get 3P squared plus P squared equals 64. Last little bit that I'm going to do, 3P squared is 9P squared. So I get 9p squared plus p squared equals 64. So 10p squared is 64. p squared is 64 divided by 10. And so p is the square root of 64 divided by 10. So I'll do 64 divided by 10. That's 6.4. I'll square root the answer. And you could give it as a third if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do it as a decimal here. It wants it to one decimal place. So to one decimal place, it is 2.5. So P is 2.5. Let's see that we've got that one right. Yep, it is 2.5. I think that's probably one of the hardest questions in here, but note that it's question 22. So it's right near the end of it. Okay, so this one is another thing to do with tangents. It says C is a circle with center the origin. Tangent to C passes through these points. Work out an equation of C. Well, I find a sketch quite useful for this. So first of all, one of the coordinates is 0, 10, which would be over here. The other coordinate is minus 20, 0, which would be over here. And it says that this line is a tangent to the circle. So there's some kind of circle that's in here like this, not particularly perfectly drawn, um, but we want to find out the equation of that circle. Now remember the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So this is the thing, we want this. If we can find out what r is, then we can actually find out the equation of the circle. So let's start talking about the tangent that we've got here, okay? Let's talk about the tangent and let's find the tangent equation. So to find the equation of that tangent, we're going to need to find out the gradient. So the gradient of these two points, I should say why I want to find out the tangent, because if I find out the tangent, I should be able to find out what the radius is. 
and the tangent and the radius meet at um, 90 degrees. So this is a really difficult question. So the tangent equation, we're going to find out the gradient. So I'll do the change in y, which is 10 minus 0, over the change in x, which is 0 minus minus 20. So that's just going to be a 10 divided by 20, which is a half. And I can actually come up with the equation of this line now because I know that the y-intercept, which is this point here, is 10. So the tangent equation is y equals a half x plus 10. Now what I'm going to do is try in red, I'm going to try and find out what this equation is, what the equation of that one is. If I find the equation of that, I can find out where they cross and I can use that to find the length of that line. So I'm now going to be finding the radius equation. Now the radius is perpendicular to the tangent, so the gradient is going to be minus 2. It is the negative perpendicular. And because it's going through the origin, it is just going to be y equals minus 2x. So these two things are going to cross at this particular point that we've got here. Now the way that you find them crossing is you make them equal to each other, you make them a simultaneous equation. So we get a half x plus 10 equals minus 2x. So I'm going to do the half x plus 2, that's going to be a 2.5x, a half plus 2 is 2.5x. The 10 will go to the other side and become minus 10. And again, you can do this on your calculator, but minus 10 divided by 2.5 is minus 4. So I now know for this point that we've got here that the x-coordinate is minus 4. I just need to find out the y-coordinate. Well, you could either substitute it in here or in here, but I'm going to substitute it in this one because I think it's easier. So the y-coordinate is minus 2 times minus 4 is minus 2 times minus 4, which is 8. So that means that the coordinate that we have here is minus 4. Eight. So our last thing to do is to try and find out what the radius is. Now I'm going to try and do a very small triangle between here, here and here. I want to just actually find out the length of that line. Well the length of that line is just coming from Pythagoras. So if I do that last little bit that I've got, that triangle that I have here, I know that the x bit along the bottom is 4 and the y bit is 8 and that is the radius. So the radius squared is 4 squared plus 8 squared. And 4 squared plus 8 squared, after all that work, I'm going to do it nice and quick on the calculator, is 80. So the radius squared is 80. Remember, that was the thing that we wanted at the very beginning. Hence, the equation is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 80. Now, I know there are a lot of students that I teach for A-level that would probably find this quite tricky as well. So I'm not surprised that this is right at the end of the exam paper and it's also five marks. But we did get the right answer of x squared plus y squared equals 80. And there's so many different methods of going about it, but I've tried to show it to you in the one that I think is the most sense making for me. So that is everything on equations of circles and tangents that has been asked so far up until 2021. And in the next videos, I will be continuing with algebra. If you found this useful, Please do like the video, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends.